vestibule. This is a very large room, surviving in Diocletian's palace from his time, and they say it's the entrance room to his personal apartments, but I really wonder on how much good evidence that is based. All the reconstructions of it show it as a square building, completely roofed in with no skylights, so it seems that they weren't really getting the full benefit of the dominess of this. Now, I did fancy that between those upper windows I could see where previous arches had been letting in more light, but that wouldn't work if it's all been concreted in in the corners in this way. Um, why did it need to be so strong? The scars on this door jam show just how many times they've chopped and changed their mind over how to use this room. I did hear the tour guides saying all sorts of spurious nonsense about amazing details about how this room was used. I don't think they really know. But it is nice to see some good Roman layered brick and stonework. So I put it to you that maybe it was the acoustics they built this for. Maybe this was Diocletian's concert hall. My faith in the solidity of this woodwork holding us uh, safe here uh, is somewhat shaken by my noticing that this is rotten and has just collapsed. But ah, it's safe as houses. So here we have the baptistry. So this is the bath where they would dunk you. And today people drop coins in it, even though there's no water in it. And here's a statue of um, a man making rather a rude sign. Doesn't look like it's used to me, but this was once the Temple of Jupiter. And that is a rather nice barrel vault ceiling. The sarcophagi of some early Christian bishops. From the Greek, sarcophagus, literally flesh eater. They would put your body in that. And it would do its job. And we can see there on the inside the Kairu. Oh, whoops, that's a bit embarrassing. Yes, when I was 12 and I first read of the Cairo cultists, uh, I got it into my head that it was pronounced Kairu. And it seems that in, even in my adult life, when I'm concentrating on camera work and so forth, this childhood habit returns. Sorry about that. The two Greek symbols that look a bit like an, a P and an X, but they were actually the Chi, that's the X one, and the Ru, that's the P one, the first two letters of Christ. And so that's a very common early Christian symbol which has been added to this very pagan temple. And as you can see, they have some very natty concealed lighting. So what they're doing is they're hijacking the pagan world. Christian cross. In Croatia, the very small coins are not worth much. So we shouldn't get too excited. You may think if you play lots of Dungeons and Dragons, my goodness, that's 2,000 gold pieces. But actually that's about enough there for a couple of ice creams. This is one place I shan't be looting. Sometimes I look at art from the late antiquity and think, guys, you're just not trying anymore. Did they get their children to do the art in the churches in those days? I mean, look, his feet are just floating in midair. They haven't thought this through at all. Look at the folds on the cloth. Look at the, I mean, just even the sizes of the heads make them look like children. Undignified, but I'm sorry, I did have to laugh at this tombstone because that is quite clearly a comedy cartoon face. You join me here on the quayside at Split, and I'm afraid that it's a little bit stinky. There's a definite, there's a definite whiff of sulphur in the air, a sort of rotten egg smell. You know the one? Um, well, this is because there is a hot spring here, and it's imagined that Diocletian, who was from this area, knew about the hot springs, and so he decided to site his palace here. Although not exactly where the springs are. Instead, he rather sensibly put his palace a couple of hundred yards that way just beyond smell range of the spring. Um, it's interesting that uh, there are some quite expensive restaurants that are well within smell range of um, uh, these hot springs, and uh, <laughs> I say I would definitely cite a restaurant somewhere else.